How do you know if your boat is taking on water before it's too late? I'm Carolyn Sherlock, and on this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast, I share some things that you must consider when choosing a bilge alarm. It's inexpensive insurance that might just save your boat. This episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Yugo Wear. Yugo is the only waterproof floating phone case using dry suit zipper technology. Invest in your safety, because if you don't protect, you can't connect. Your phone is fully functional, and there's plenty of room for your keys, cash, and cards. To get the only dry bag on the market with zero phone fails, visit yougoware.com. That's U-G-O-W-E-A-R.com. And use promo code BG20 for 20% off your order. You go. Prepare for adventure. Almost four years ago, we got the horrible news that another Gemini took on water and sank underway to the Bahamas. The two people aboard were rescued by their buddy boat with no injuries, but the boat was lost. The owner publicly said that they had discovered two inches of water over the floorboards in one hall around midnight were unable to find where the water was coming from, and within 20 minutes had to abandon the boat as it was about to capsize due to all the water in one hull. Now that got Dave and I thinking. Barefoot Gal didn't have any sort of early warning system of water intrusion. Our previous boat, a Tayana 37 with deep bilges, had a very loud alarm on the primary bilge pump. If the pump ran, you knew it, and you could or would investigate. Twice that alarm alerted us to a problem, once when the freshwater tank developed a leak, and once when the stuffing box was reinstalled upside down after having been worked on. We both think that in order to have any chance of saving the boat in the events of a through-hull failure or any other water intrusion, you have to know about it as soon as possible. You also have to have the tools and a plan to stop the leak. So I started looking at bilge alarms from various marine sources. And I discovered that they tended to be expensive, hardwired, hence time-consuming to install. And most were designed for a light and alarm at the helm. Nothing was wrong with them, but it just seemed like overkill for a boat like ours. We don't believe in cheaping out when it comes to safety equipment but we thought that something simpler might actually be better. Continuing to search, I was able to find a better solution for our needs. A home leak detector. They're designed to sound an alarm. Sounds similar to a smoke detector. But anyways, an alarm when water is detected. And they're typically used near hot water heaters, washing machines, dishwashers, under sinks and toilets, and near sumps. Luckily, one was listed as boat bilges in possible use, and Google picked up on it. You place the unit on its back where you want to detect water. If water contacts both of the sensor wires, the alarm will sound. They're pretty small, basically a little larger than a deck of cards. Most of them run off a 9-volt battery. There's no installation either. You just pop in the battery, test it, and place it where you want it. In a boat, you may want to actually secure it a little bit, uh, just so it doesn't go sliding in your bilge. Anyway, several companies make leak detectors, and each has at least a couple of models. After looking at many product listings and reviews on Amazon, I started picking up on some differences. Some are single-use and come with a battery pre-installed. They're slightly cheaper, but you can't test them, and once they get wet once... Say if you leave a hatch open, it rains, and water gets in the bilge. They have to be replaced. Some don't float. If there's a lot of water, they'll beep maybe once or twice and then just die silently. Some have batteries that can't be replaced. And a few can't be turned off except by removing the battery. Just drying the contacts won't stop the alarm. Most, but not all of them, have a low battery alert. Again, generally a chirp similar to a smoke detector. 
and some have a lot of reviews saying that they're not loud. All will detect water somewhere in the 132nd to 116th of an inch range. That's actually a little oversensitive for us, as even a few drops of water from changing the speed log to the dummy plug at anchor or a tiny leak in the hatch would set it off. But the gizmo can be set up so it's not quite in the lowest point of the bilge. That's what we did. It takes a couple of gallons of water in there to trigger the alarm. Or you could glue a small strip of wood to one end of the bottom so that it would take more than just a few drops of water to sound the alarm. We don't want a lot of nuisance alarms because otherwise then you just start getting fed up with it and throw it out. Anyways, there's a link to the one that we chose. They float, they have a low battery alert, they're small and are loud. From our testing, I'd say they're on a par with most smoke detectors. And actually, we've had a couple of incidents where they have given us a warning, basically from uh, water coming in around our uh, speed lock. They can be turned off by drawing the contacts and can be used again after they've gone off once. Dave and I got one for each hull. Depending on your boat and the bilge configuration, you might want additional water detectors near a freshwater tank or near your holding tank to tell you of problems in those areas, too. They're relatively inexpensive, so they're a very cost-effective early warning system. We got two of them and bought four lithium 9-volt batteries, two to install immediately and two to spare. Find all the links in the show notes. They're all from Amazon. Thanks for listening to the Boat Galley Podcast. Never miss an episode by subscribing today. 